And we are live. Hello, everyone. This is Jared Albrick, the Yard Sale Artist, coming at you live from the Yard Sale Artist Studios on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to be doing a book page sketch today, just like you see in the title. I'm doing an Iron Man book page sketch on a page from the Age of Ultron. Uh, looks like the youth book. And, uh, of course, I've got my page here, and I've got a, a white pencil sketch of it laid out, so I'm ready to ink and color. As usual, my OCD has made it that uh, I have to have a page that mentions Iron Man, so I've got that one all hunted down. And I'm glad that you guys are joining me. Uh, be sure to pop in the chat, say hello. We'll see what's up. And I will start uh, start inking Iron Man. As always, we are listening to the smooth sounds of Joe November. I encourage you to check out Joe's SoundCloud page. Jay, uh, you can just go to SoundCloud and search Joe November. You will find him. I guarantee you. And we're just going to relax, draw, and answer any questions you might have in the chat. And have ourselves a nice little Wednesday afternoon. I feel like Bob Ross. I'm so so laid back and chill today. So I'm starting with the bigger of the Micron uh, Pigma series. I'm using a number eight. Uh, just decided I wanted to go pretty heavy with the lines on this piece today. And so an eight is a good way to do that. Iron Man's got a lot of smooth lines, so I'm trying to be as smooth as I can with them today. Old Iron Man, boy, he certainly got... Um, Certainly got popular from that movie series. I remember when Iron Man was kind of a B-team hero. Then those movies hit. He went A-list. This goes to show you what good casting can do. I think he was really well casted. Um, Robert Downey Jr. was a great, great choice for casting. One of the rare instances where I think the movie character actually improved upon what was in the comics. Last guy I saw do that was Blade. Oh, do a little jawline there. I'm going to go ahead and knock out this finger since it's kind of all up in my way. And I want to make sure I balance it right with the face. There we go. That'll make my life a little easier here. Fill in some lines. Uh. 
This one is a piece for a client. I've done a couple pieces for. I met him at a convention down in Panama City. A, oh gosh, maybe five years ago, four or five years ago. Big Iron Man guy. And he's had, he's got a few different Iron Mans from me, but when he saw I was doing these book page sketches, he was like, man, I got to get an Iron Man one. I said, I just so happen to have a, a busted copy of an Avengers book, so that's good. It all worked out. get those fingers out of the way since they're in the foreground. Probably should have started with them, but hey, we're good now. I'm going to bust out the old template here uh, for the circles in his hands so that way they can be just right. I got like a little rough pencil circle but if I got a template and I can make a perfect one then why not that one and that one all good And action take care of there. Yeah, foreground hand laying out. There we go. Coming together. See, getting some uh, some love over there on this as this is streaming on Facebook, and I appreciate that. Thanks for the love. We're streaming on Facebook and Periscope over on Twitter and on YouTube, of course. As always, we'd really appreciate it uh, if you haven't already. You'd have over to YouTube and give the channel a subscription. Most appreciated. Hey, Courtney. I got my friend Courtney in the chat over on YouTube. 
I hope you're having a wonderful day, Courtney. Just some Iron Man action today. Courtney joined us as usual last night on our regular Tuesday night show that Mark Hatherley and I do. And I think it was her idea to do on the three minute sketch card, Mickey Mouse. So that's three minutes of, uh, <laughs> of Mickey Mouse uh, drawing from last night's show. If you're into that. Jeff, definitely join us on Tuesdays for that. And um, Courtney's uh, brother has a sort of a, a, commission subscription service with me he's got a series that i'm doing for him he gets one a month and so i will just tuck that mickey mouse in with his next package delivery so courtney can have that one so yeah i think uh um I think the next one I have to do for your brother, Courtney, is um, Superman. So when I get that one done, we'll get that sent your way. And as I was mentioning on that show, on our Tuesday night show, it's every Tuesday night at 5 p.m. Central. Uh, I've discovered that as long as your card is four by six, these are a little too big. I think these are five by sevens. They're four by six. You can send it as a postcard. So I might start doing three minute sketch postcard things, get some postcard stamps. That way people who watch the show can put in some suggestions and I'll sketch them and I'll slap a postcard stamp on it and mail it to the person. So that'll, that'll be fun doing the three minute thing. We might do an episode where all we do is three minute sketches. You know, now that I say that out loud, that wouldn't be a bad idea for like a fundraiser episode for the channel. We'll do three minute sketches, a uh, postcard, you know, maybe you put in, I don't know, five bucks or something and, and, uh, get your, uh, get your own postcard mailed to you. Three minute version of whatever you want. Just thinking out loud, that might work. together genome shows up for another pop-up sketch episode hi genome just knocking out another commission on my list which means i'll get one more commission closer to working on that piece i got a piece to do with genome on uh his live stream for one of his winners All coming together. I have lots of commissions to do, and I am thankful for it. For each and every one. There we 
go. Iron Man legs, Iron Man legs. I appreciate the feedback, uh, Courtney, on the just kind of rattling off ideas of maybe doing a fundraiser for the show. Help pay our hosting and streaming costs. Not a bad idea. Do the three minute. What we're talking about, if you joined us late, was doing the three minute sketches like we do on the Tuesday night show. We usually take a break about halfway through the show, me and Mark, and we take a random suggestion. Last night's was Mickey Mouse and just see how far you can sketch in three minutes. And that's as far as I got. And the, before that, it was Black Widow. And the week before that, it was Hawk from Buck Rogers. Um, so what we're talking about is getting these a little smaller because if they're four by six, you could send them as a postcard. Maybe doing a fundraiser around that, doing an episode maybe where all we do is those and people can chip in five bucks and we can laugh about how bad some of them come out or <laughs> be surprised at how good some of them come out. It's kind of a fun game. So we're definitely going to think about that. But I appreciate your input on that idea, Courtney. And if anybody else out there has input on that, they think the three-minute sketch fundraiser would be something they'd be interested in doing, you know? Maybe drop five bucks to get a Three minute sketch postcard sent to your house. I don't know. I'm all ears. And now I'm doing that thing where I go back around the entire main outline with a much thicker line. So things will start popping out more. I like to do is give like the thickest line goes around the edge of the entire drawing. And then a medium thickness line goes around the pertinent major parts like the head. Even the head of medium thickness line right now, but all the main outline going with a heavy thickness, and then just basically a one one uh, one width of the pen thickness for uh, all the finer detail inside the armor. If that makes sense. I learned all these line thickness tricks from legendary anchor John Beatty. I encourage everybody to check out his channel, John Beatty Art. I talked to John today for it is his birthday. So if you're friends with John, if you're friends with me, there's a good chance you're friends with John on social media. Um, stop by and wish him a happy birthday. Genome asks, does perspective give you any fits? Of course, sometimes um, perspective does uh, cause troubles. Uh, but a lot of times it'll kind of solve itself if you just remember what to draw first, you know. You start with the hand, like in this Iron Man, this, this hand was a good place to start. But it can be fitful sometimes. It takes me longer to figure it out than it does uh, Bermuda Mark. That's for sure. Mark works so fast, if, as you see on our Tuesday night live streams. He's been given the gift. But that's why I'm the writer of the comic we're working on. He's the artist. <laughs> Man's got to know his limitations. I can do these book page sketches. I can do the uh, little recreation covers like we did on the Tuesday night. That kind of stuff. But when it comes to really good like sequential art with great perspective and consistency, that's an area I've got to work on. That's why I got Mark making my comments. Coming together. Um, I gotta show you that Michael Myers, don't I? Uh, you know, that's I have. I gotta remember to go get that one. That one's out in my building because uh, it's in a different folder than the other ones because it's a black and white print only. 
So, um, first of all, you got to dig the black and white. Um, although I'm seriously considering getting it colored uh, by my friend Ken Solo, who cover colors a lot of my stuff. Ken's been a little bit busy lately. I got to get up with Ken about a couple other things that we've got going. Make sure those get finished first before I give him more stuff to do. At least this paper is nice. This is a pretty decent paper. Better than most book page pages I get. This paper is pretty... Pretty much better quality than what I'm used to. Not great. You know, no Bristol paper or anything like that, but... Occasionally I find a... A busted book that has a good paper quality, which is nice. Because it alleviates some of the challenges of book page work which somehow I've decided to throw them in uh, as my life's work book page stuff I like doing them though which is good because I do a lot of them So quite not quite as thick on the hand in the back as it's farther away. So I did a little thinner there. This needs to be thicker. A little thinner as the foot goes back. I need to thicken up the hand a little more since it's foreground. Whatever's closest to the quote unquote camera, I like to have a real thick line because it's you know, in your face, bold. There we go. I think that'll work. I don't know. I understand, Genome. You're not being a pest. I don't put a ton of prints on my website. I try to do a lot of just original pieces on the site. Um, but I do have do have some of those in stock. Um, and I will be happy to to zip you one of the picture of that. Maybe I should go ahead and put my entire print stock on the site. There's a lot of them, that's for sure. I've thought about it. There we go. Maybe I should go ahead and just bite the bullet with all the print stock on the site. Would make my life easier and my customers' lives easier. All right. Got ink to dry a little bit before I come back and hit it with some light eraser work to get rid of the pencils. Well, Courtney, I hope your cousins dig your baby Yoda for sure. And if they need one, you know right where to send them. Then my boy Jared will take care of you. <laughs> Even though this paper is a little better than what I'm used to working with, I still gotta, it's not great, so I gotta be real careful and go real light with this eraser before we put the color down and make the magic happen. I'm gonna bold circle in his hand real quick simply by taking a circle that's slightly bigger than the one that I already put down right 
around again. There we go. That is good. Good. That spot I got to fill in right there. Smooth that line out. Color time. Three levels of red to work with today. I'm going to start with a terracotta. Red. Which we'll put down. You know, I'll start with this helmet. Sure. I found it. Man, I keep seeing the little pencil lines to get rid of. All right, so we'll start with this here. So there's a terracotta. And his ear is going to be one of the darkest ones. So I'm going to go over the, the terracotta with a crimson red. It's actually going to end up getting three layers of color. Because it is a, a dark, no reflection zone, then I'm going to go over that with a brown. Really darken up that red. And that will be the dark red. And I'll run that little trio of color with the different designs depending on how the light plays on it on each one, each section. This section is just like the ear. It'll be a real deep, deep red. Now, this section here is where things are going to get a little more interesting. I'm going to have some light play on this section. For example, there's not going to be any deep, deep reds on this one. There's going to be a highlighted area. Here. And here. So this section will only get two levels of red. And it'll have a highlighted area where it's just the terracotta color poking through to give it some some life like so that's a tiniest little bleed through right there so I'm gonna hide it with just a little bit of black ink there we go and no one will be the wiser All right, our next area of red. I'll tell you what, I'll be smart. If you're smart and you're right-handed, you work from top left to bottom right, or else you drag your hand through everything. So I'll work uh, these fingers next. Oops, doesn't start with this. Follow the rules, Jared. It starts with terracotta. Speaking freely, no games of how she feels. She keeps 
knows the deal, yeah, she knows the deal. No drama, no snakes, no fakes or phonies. Good vibes only. Color in the piece is one of my favorite parts. It's funny because, you know, I, I sell a lot of these art pieces and if you ask me, I'd say that uh, my strengths are actually as a inker and a colorist more so than the artist because I got to have reference for like everything. Again, I got to be jealous of my boy Mark who just has a great artist's eye, mind's eye. Me, I have to reference just about everything, but then I'm pretty proud of my ink work and my color work. It's come a long way. I just love how just different layers of colors and, you know, levels of dark and light on them can really just take a piece to a whole new place. Maybe I should have been a colorist. <laughs> All right, we'll take a terracotta break here for a minute. Let the marker rest. Start adding some layers. Burner count. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. So right now, what I'm doing is these fingers will go from light to dark towards the tip because the light source is going to be the repulsor ray in the middle. Always a plan. Now, whether I actually pull this plan off, that's a whole other bottle of wax. Courtney asks, how's Shipwrecker coming? Shipwrecker is the comic book that I'm making with Mark Hatherling. Going good. The, um, the story's done. Mark has the whole script. He's, I think, about, I'd say, 10 pages in to the art. But, you know, I cut him some slack because he's, he's inking it as well as uh, drawing it. Originally, I was going to be the anchor, but I just had too many projects. I'm making another comic right now. I think Cold Lightning 2 for White Rocket. And uh, all my other things I have going on. So I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do all this inking. So Mark said he'd take up the inking job on it. And it makes it definitely more challenging. But it's looking so good. Wish I could show you pictures right now. But I think Shipwrecker is going to be a lot of fun. And then I got Francisco Stein in the works as well, which I'm also inking. Told you I had a lot going on. So I'm basically inking Francisco Stein, Cold Lightning, and then my everything else I'm doing. All right, for this section, let's go ahead and bring in our Dark Darks now. Yeah, she 
knows the deal. No drama, no snakes, no fakes or phonies. Good vibes only, baby, chill and my lonely. It almost cannot be described. It's a good brown is a great shading for a red. Once you've got a red down, can't go wrong with a with a brown for it. Because you won't really lose the red, but it'll just get nice and dark. Now you can see the levels of color are starting to really give it some fun and some pop. You're right about that, Courtney. You're spreading yourself too thin. Iron Man is definitely one of the more intricate superheroes to draw. That's why when I got approached by this guy to do this one, I told him, you know, it's a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more money for uh, this Iron Man. A, because it's on a, a bigger page. It's just over the size where the postage changes. It's a little more expensive to ship it. And then B, Iron Man is just, as you can see, Lots of levels uh, to draw and then ink and then color because he's so segmented. There's, you know, there's probably 100, 150 segments in here right now. Again, we start with terracotta. We come back with crimson over terracotta. I'm just realizing we've got an accent line that I'd like to put in. There. Yeah, that looks better. Courtney says, any plans for Mother's Day? Yeah, of course. Um, of course, I have to call my mother <laughs> on Mother's Day. And then I have to make sure that my wife is uh, is taken care of. We already ordered her some stuff, some gifts. So we, me and the boys got to wrap those. And I'm sure we'll just make a dinner for her, whatever she likes. And, of course, she... Her mother lives in the same town as us, so she'll spend a lot of time over with her mom. So it's always, you know, my wife 
doesn't get uh, as much as she should, I think, on Mother's Day. Because she's always, you know, because we live in the same town as her mother, so she devotes her Mother's Day to her mother, which is nice. But we'll try to put something a little, something nice together for her here at our house, for, for the mama that lives in our house. <laughs> There we go. Now we've got the uh, le levels of color through the uh, through the hand. Burn says, "Who's your favorite Batman actor uh, or Joker?" As far as the Batman actors go, actually, I don't know. There's I like them all for different reasons, but I guess actually I really liked Affleck. I wish that it worked out better than it did. And then, as far as Jokers go. I think whew, Heath Ledger is probably still my favorite. But if I'm allowed to cheat, I'd say um, I'd go animated and say Kevin Conroy is my favorite Batman and Mark Hamill is my favorite Joker. Not exactly live action, so I know I'm cheating a little bit. But uh, I'm all ears for whatever you think, uh, Burner. Courtney says she likes Adam West and Heath Ledger. Interesting combination, but I get what you're saying. For sure. Oh, Iron Man. So many levels to color. And you guys can see what I was talking about, about him being more intricate and more time demanding. Because if you've been here long enough to know, these pop-up book page sketches usually last 30 to 45 minutes. We're currently at minute 43, and I still have quite a bit of coloring to do. <laughs> break and do some darkening work on these. Every once in a while I'll just take a break to, to do some darkening and highlight work just to break up the monotony sometimes. <laughs> the fun and coloring is in the layering for me. So I enjoy the layering piece. That's probably why a lot of your comic book colors, colorists, um, they actually pay somebody else to do what's called flatting. They'll do the flat. Okay, this area is filled with this basic red. and Then they come in and do all the highlight work. So the colorists you see in the comics a lot of times pay somebody else to flat for them put in just the flat colors and then they come and spend time spicing it up which is a pretty good idea 
sometimes I wish I had someone to come in and flat these for me. Just put the base red on there, you know, the terracotta red on there, and I'll come in and <laughs> do the dark work. Got the awesome tunes of Joe November to keep us company and smooth us out on this Wednesday. Not too bad. I'm liking where this is going so far. Let's go over here and do this other arm. Whoops. I don't want the fat side. Uh, Burner said he liked Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. You know, nothing wrong with that. I think those are great. I really do. There's not a bad one in the bunch, really. You know, a lot of people like to, you know, say George Clooney was bad. And I actually think George Clooney was a, uh, was an excellent Bruce Wayne and a pretty, he was an okay Batman. But I thought his real strength was Bruce, Bruce Wayne. And I don't, I don't blame Clooney for that movie. Like, a lot of people do. Clooney kind of blames himself, which kind of makes me sad. Because I'm like, no, man. He's, it was just not well written. That's all. <laughs> In my opinion. I will admit that Batman and Robin with Clooney uh, can be a guilty pleasure for me sometimes. Sometimes I'll pop it in and watch it just for the heck of it. I like the pain. Don't judge me. <laughs> I have a funny feeling that once we start dropping yellows on this guy, it's really going to start to zip. I think yellow was really what makes Iron Man work. Oops, I almost skipped a step. Grabbed the wrong one. Bad, bad yard sale artist. Top half is just about there. Just a little bit more of this red left to go. Yeah, I keep up on the wrong side of the marker. 
should actually pay attention to those labels there. connect. Almost done with the reds. Ah. See what I'm missing in the chat here. Superpower, do you want to have x-ray vision? Okay. <laughs> Burner's right. That x-ray vision, you might see something you can't unsee. <laughs> I'll play along with folks in the chat and see if I had a superpower. I don't know. I've always liked super speed. I've always thought being the Flash would be cool. And for some reason, I don't even know why. I know this is an odd one that doesn't come up a lot, but I always thought like being elastic like Mr. Fantastic would be cool. I know in retrospect I probably really hosed myself on the duration of this drawing because I could have just done two tone color instead of three tone. But what the heck, right? I'm gonna do it, do it right, and have fun with it. Yellow time. Yeah, once again, three tones. We start with cream. Cream is going to be our first lay down, or just real faint yellow. Basically just a hint of yellow, but it'll look nice on our accents. Oops. I just realized I missed a red spot. This right here is actually red, as is the chin. I basically missed his little chin strap, if you will. Everybody got to be 
Yes, that's better. Now, back to cream. So one of my favorite questions to ask while we're talking about superpowers and stuff in the chat. I've probably asked it before on the show, but I love getting people's opinions. I don't know if we've heard the opinion of the burner account yet. But if you were a henchman and you had to work for any particular villain, like which villain would you work for if you had to work for one? All our baseline yellow creams are down. I'm going to come up over with yellow okra to give it another shade over that. So I'll just let the uh, creams kind of peek out as highlights in certain areas. Other than that, I'm going to take it a shade darker. This is definitely going to give it a more golden hue. Again, I just let some of the um, cream color just peek out just to give it a little accent. And then the third one is called Goldenrod. It's a real deep sort of mustardy yellow. So I could do my shaded areas in Goldenrod. Do is the legs. Back to the yellow okra. Now the funny thing is this back leg doesn't have any cream to stand out, but you still want to put it down, even if you're going to completely color over it so you get the exact same color tone. Because without the cream base, you get a little bit different of a color tone. This one only has one highlight along the edge, which is uh, only accentuated by the goldenrod because this leg is back, so it's mostly in shadow. I give it one highlight along the edge to make it pop out just a little. Now this leg... One big highlight streak. I'm 
down yeah, the middle of it so that cream will really boldly poke through. go and this should be the last of the golden rod now all I have left is a little light or what I call electric blue highlight work Almost forgot his eyes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, one hour later. <laughs> Told you Iron Man's a little trickier. Is Iron Man. Hola, Chola. Good to see you here. I'm glad that the middle says Iron Man looks cool. I'm just wrapping it up. There you have it. Iron Man on a page from this here Avengers book. Woo! Like I said, he's a little tougher. Took about a full hour, but I did do three layers of color, so I did a little bit of that to myself. <laughs> but I, I thank you guys for being here and hitting me up in the chat. Oh goodness! I'm, you know what? Coffee and comics showed up in time to say, ask what? No circle? And you know what? You're right. They all look better with the yard sale artist circle, don't they? He takes up a lot of space though, so I'd have to kind of. I think the best place for the circle would be about here. So yeah, no, we will do a circle, buddy. We will do a circle just because you uh, you demanded it. We give you what you demand for on the show for the most part. <laughs> and so a circle it shall be. Let's see. If that'll work. Now we've got a circle. And now you got me wanting to color that circle. Probably a greenish. Let's see. Let's go to our color wheel from our friend, John Beatty. We have used red and we have used yellow. So we want to kind of go to what's on the opposite of that, which is a blue. So I don't want to use the same blue that I used in here. Maybe a dark blue, uh, like a like a deep dark blue would help make the colors of the other blue brighter. Yeah, let's play with that. You know what? I take it back. Because most of the color inside the circle is red. I'm going to go straight opposite and go with a green. My initial instinct of green, I'm sticking with it. I'm going to use one of my more fun greens. A chartreuse, which is fun to say. I just think that chartreuse is really going to play up the red really nicely. 
a little extra definition all because my boy coffee and comics stopped by yeah i was, wasn't even thinking circles today man i don't know how i don't know how the yard sale artist gets away without thinking circles is what i do <laughs> circles or squares i did a square last night on the on the live stream the dr doom recreation piece i did oh that red square behind doom played nice too yeah last night it was a well a rectangle actually we're being if we're being specific it was a rectangle Thanks to you, Coffee and Comics, the client on this one's going to get just a little bit more. You're improving the quality of customer service at Yard Sale Artist Headquarters. <laughs> I should start saying, you know, book page sketches, you know, like this Iron Man, I think it was 27 bucks. I should be like, 27 bucks. If you want a circle, it's $150. The circle is in demand, people. <laughs> Uh, hundred dollar upcharge for the circle. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'm glad you're digging the beats. Coffee and comics, like we mentioned earlier. Coffee and comics, in case you can't see their chat, he's chatting via Periscope over on Twitter. Um, I'm glad you dig the beats. I can't mention enough that it is Joe November. And I encourage everyone to check out Joe's SoundCloud. Just head over to SoundCloud and look up Joe November. And there we go. Book page sketch. Iron Man for reals this time. Like I said, you listen to Joe November. Like I said, join us back here on Tuesday night at 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 Mountain, 3 Pacific, 7 if you have to live, 7 p.m. if you happen to live in Bermuda, like my friend Mark does. Now Mark and I will be back here drawing for your pleasure and chatting and cutting up. We had a real good time last time. Hope to see you there. That's Tuesday nights, 5 p.m. Central. Other than that, thanks for being here. If you need a book page sketch, you know where to find me. There's my, there's my at. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just come find me. Let me know you need a book page sketch or whatever else you might need. And uh, we'll work it out. I appreciate everybody's support. And I'll see you either Tuesday night or if I do a pop-up between here and there. Bye.